subwafers might just be the best support perk in the game now i've been doing this for almost three years now and i never noticed ever since totally rocking out came out that subwafers or battle beat or fumble or whichever one you want to call it worked on deployables now maybe just maybe i missed it maybe that's a that's a, that's a chance i may have just not seen it i was looking for it to crit and it never did with totally rocking out and maybe i missed it However, I have talked to some other content creators, namely Demon Joe, Isherwood, and about 70% of my stream all agrees that for 11.0, Battle Beat, Rock and Riff, Fumble, all of those things did not work on deployables. That's Teddy, Shock Towers, Decoys, even some other abilities, just it didn't buff them. However, since 11.0 and since a Reddit post that I saw, which we'll talk about in a minute, Apparently, you can use consumables to buff your teddies. And with the addition of Happy Holidays and that kind of trumping totally rocking out for the moment, Outlanders have really gotten into a decent position. Being able to buff your damage by 50% for at least a second and then go down to, you know, 0% or 25% in total because it's a decaying thing is one of the best things you can do. Not only does it work for all of your abilities, but it also works for your weapons, your melee, your range, your rocket launchers, it doesn't matter. Having that damage boost, being able to be activated whenever you need it is one of the strongest perks in the game. And the fact that it works on literally everything now just might make it the best. As I was perusing Reddit the other day, I saw a post by GMG Corno saying that today I learned going coconuts and rock and riff can increase your teddy damage. Now, like I said previously, I thought at least before 11.0 came out, it didn't. I've tested this six ways to Sunday and it never seemed to work. Granted, I was looking for a crit and not a damage increase, but I think I would have noticed that going on. Regardless, going coconuts, yes, you heard that right, and rock and riffs both increase your teddy damage. However, in my opinion, I wouldn't take going coconuts just because your loadout ends up looking like this and you don't really have a weapon to use. But what are subwafers? I know I need to explain it because I've been asked it a lot in my videos. What is that blue thing that you're eating during your mission, Tic Tac? What is that blue thing in your loadout? Well, you get it from main stage Quinn. And if you happen to have a voucher, a hero voucher, I would maybe even go as far to, as to suggest getting her because her perk is unprecedented in the game, allowing yourself to get 50% extra damage on that first hit and increased attack speed is fantastic. It's one of the reasons we can carry so hard in Mythic Storm King as well. It's key in that game mode. So let's talk about Subwafers Plus. In fact, let's just talk about Subwafers because they do the same thing. Harvesting metal objects has a 32% chance to give a Subwafer. Consuming that Subwafer grants Rock and Riff, increases damage by 50%, and melee attack speed by 32. Now, like I said, originally I was almost positive it didn't really work on Teddy's turrets or whatever, but apparently now it does, and I think that is a new thing. There's not many other abilities in the game, specifically in this instance, let's talk about Outlanders, that give you a bonus to raw damage, except for Bear Zerker. Everything else is some sort of conditional damage. You need to be low health. They need to be hot, far away. You need to have high health. It needs to be energy damage, etc., etc. There's always some condition that you need to do to achieve extra damage. However, Rock and Riff, or Subwafers in this case, is unconditional. You can use it whenever you want it. And on top of that, it buffs your AR damage, your shock tower, and whatever hero you might be using, if they have a seismic slam as well, it buffs that. Also buffing all of your weapons, your damage in every aspect possible on command. You just eat a wafer, you shoot for eight seconds, eat another wafer. Another thing about subwafers is that it's actually pretty easy to farm. A 32% chance is a 32% chance. And if you're playing an outlander with the punch amc you're good to go and you will have plenty of biscuits throughout your game to play with so with that knowledge we decided to do some fun things the first thing we tried was uh well we tried a ton of things but one of the things i want to talk about 
is a decoy build because this worked surprisingly well and the damage was kind of decent you can see right there we were hitting for 264,000. now i wouldn't really suggest this except for encampment there's no real reason to bring this into a mission 264,000 damage on an elemental smasher is absolutely nothing but you can see here with a bunch of constructors we were taking down these encampments pretty easily and the damage was not that bad Plasma Pulse is deceptively strong. You can see right here it one-shotting a 172 Smasher. One-shotting, of course, in air quotes because we're using an ability. Uh, to make a build like this, all you do is you pick a, a Plasma Specialist is a, and then you pick every single Plasma Pulse perk that we have, stick it in the build, eat a subwafer right before you drop it, drop the thing, and just watch the numbers fly. Granted, the cooldown on this ability is ridiculous even with happy holidays but it's something you might want to try another build that we did run was wild fragment deadeye who ha arguably has one of the best shock towers in the game same concept here you eat a subwafer and you throw down your shock tower or you throw down your shock tower and eat a subwafer this build all we did was ghoulish cackle uh, and all the shock tower perks that you could possibly grab you can see here that azalea clark's just one shotted everything there and she was doing the exact same thing as well all of these abilities are a lot more fun to play with now that happy holidays is in the game and makes all of these builds even more viable but the one that i have to admit that i had the most fun on and you're going to have to take my word on it because this video would be six hours long the i tried every teddy build you could imagine the goal was to be able to use one teddy and clear out an entire 140 super encampment the closest i got was on jilly however it only happened once and that's due to the rng of malfunction malfunction is an incredibly strong ability especially in command but the one i actually am going to recommend to you is a little bit different teddy is a weird ability it should be a single target damage machine, but a lot of the times it gets stuck on that elemental smasher and you, you're you screwed. Your entire teddy gets wasted for 100,000 damage because all teddies are physical except for cyberclopses. But it's also not great at AoE either. There's Shock Tower and Seismic Slam both on much shorter cooldowns and do a lot better in small, large groups of enemies. Small enemies, but a large group of them. So where does that leave? Teddy. Well, we tried our best to make it a single target damage machine or do better than Shock Tower. And although we had a ton of success on stream with Jilly as command, I tried to replicate that today and record it and I just couldn't. And the reason is because how under warranty works. It's a 5% chance. It comes down to RNG. If this perk goes off a lot, you're in good shape. If it doesn't, yeah, there's definitely better things you can bring. And that's where we got into Bear Stare. Bear Stare has a high-ish base damage and a 1.5 second firing time as commander. With a Subwafer and Bear Zerker, because Bear Zerker works with Bear Stare, we thought, you know what, let's at least give it a try. What we didn't realize is that under warranty, every time it switches and the Bear Stare goes off simultaneously, the bear stair can crit, allowing for some really crazy damage numbers that trump anything I've seen before coming out of a teddy. 300,000, 330,000, really ridiculous numbers for a teddy to do, allowing it to be one of the only teddies that can reliably take down a 140 elemental smasher, at least in that regard. Again, all you do is you eat a subwafer, drop your teddy, and be at very low health so you have ghoulish cackle up all the time. This isn't a huge deal for Outlanders because you can stay at low health and stay behind your teddy to block blasters. You have a phase shift to get out. You can drop your shock tower if anything gets too close. It's a really viable build if you're trying to do ability-based damage. And on top of that, Happy Holidays, just bringing 40% cooldown to everything, allows you to spam all of these abilities. Even though we had higher consistent damage with Trailblazer Quinn and Ventura, this was definitely the most fun due to the previous problem we just suggested about it kind of being a weird ability and not really having a niche. Try this build out. Under Warranty and Bear Stare work great together. Plasma Arc works off your 300,000 damage Bear Stare, which although we found out isn't the best ability in the game, it still helps for some AoE. Bear Zerker, Ghoulish Cackle, all of this melds together for a build that you won't forget. And thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Helps out the channel a ton. If you want to check me out on stream, twitch.tv slash round the tic tac. I'll see you guys on the next video. Tic tac out.